I understand much more now. The strength of my life force has intensified since escaping the prison of human flesh. The power of your seed goes far beyond what it may seem. This is something all ancient civilizations knew and passed on to us throughout the hidden meanings of their art and allegories, allowing those of us with the eyes to see and ears to hear to decode the secrets of this sacred secretion. Whether it was in the elixir of life aka Amrita in Hindu mythology, Ambrosia the food of the gods in ancient Greece, or even the Christos aka the Christ oil hidden within the metaphors of the Bible, these ancient stories have been shrouded with symbolism to inform the future generations about this profound esoteric knowledge. So in order for us to piece the puzzle up together and truly understand how powerful this practice really is, we must first start off with the serpent of fire, aka the kundalini located at the base of your spine, which is the root chakra in Vedic philosophy and also the center of Yasar within the Kabbalistic tree of life. Now this serpent represents none other than our life force energy, aka the sexual energy that is the root source of all creation, intended to serve humanity along its evolution to higher planes of reality. Yet all throughout time man has decided to abuse this power to satisfy his sensual pleasures, instead of using it to fulfill a higher purpose, slowly but surely feeding into these carnal desires and eventually finding himself at the lowest, lowest form, form of, of his, his nature. nature. And it is only through sheer willpower and discipline over oneself that man can revert this process and seduce the serpent to serve him once again. By resisting to succumb to the dominant demands of his animalistic desires, man can gradually start to uncoil this snake and redirect this energy back up to the higher faculties of the mind, as he raises his consciousness to tap back in with the connection he has with the divine. And many records of conquering this serpent symbolizing man overcoming his lower nature can be found all throughout history. From Krishna reigning victorious over the serpent Agasura, Hercules slaying the Hydra, or even the Buddha being depicted in meditation under the protection of the seven-headed snake Naga. This phenomenon has been well documented by the ancient mystics from cultures all over the world, leaving little kernels of truth for us to connect the dots on and uncover the links between taming the serpent of sexual energy and the attainment of spiritual wisdom. As we rewind time and bring it back to the beginning to dig up some more clues within the Garden of Eden. Another parable completely encrypted with deeper esoteric meanings behind it. Now within this story of Eden, the serpent is a personification of that sexual life force energy that we discussed before. Coiled around the tree of knowledge which represents our spinal column, with Adam symbolizing the left hemisphere of our brain, responsible for our masculine attributes like logic and analysis, while Eve is symbolizing the right hemisphere of our brain, responsible for our feminine attributes of creativity and intuition. And this can also be seen as the Ida and Pingala nerves in Indian culture, both coming together to form the fruit of knowledge aka the pineal gland located at the center of the mind, representing the union of the masculine and feminine or Shiva and Shakti energies. Now with all that said, where the story most commonly gets misconstrued is within the interpretation of the serpent Nakash. Just as we previously discussed, this serpentine energy can act as man's greatest ally towards spiritual unfoldment or be the cause of his downfall if left untamed. As carnality suppresses the power of the soul and is the antithesis of spirituality. This is inevitably what caused the separation between Adam and Eve and their communion with the divine. Yet if we look a bit closer at the final details of this story, we soon come to realize that the serpent was actually the source of their salvation. See within Jewish gematria, the Hebrew science of numbers and letters, the name of the serpent in Eden Nachash adds up to the number 358, which is the same number as the word Mashiach or Messiah, the anointed one. And if you've personally dabbled around the world of Jewish gematria, you know for a damn fact that the numbers don't lie, which leads us to further investigate and decode the story of Jesus awakening the Christ within. So stick with me bro because we're really about to dive into the deep end and uncover one of the biggest occult teachings of human history. Now when we read between the lines when it comes to the story of Jesus, we soon come to realize that this is an anatomical representation of this divine alchemical process. Breaking down how SR is the practice of turning base metals into gold, as well as pointing us towards the truth behind the kingdom not built with hands. And this is exactly why Jesus states for us to neither look here nor there. Behold, 
behold, the kingdom of God is within you. As you knew, the illuminated mind, aka the cave of Brahma in Hinduism, was the seat to the soul, where matter eventually transmutes into spirit, bringing us closer to the core of reality. So with all that said, let's break the story down even further. Starting from the brain, the claustrum known as the seat of consciousness secretes a fluid, the seed of consciousness that makes its way down to the sacrum, aka the sacred place, representing Jesus being born in Bethlehem. And interesting enough, this is actually where the story of Santa Claus coming down the chimney and dropping off presents actually comes from. Now once this oil is at the sacrum, our sexual energy must help pump it back up the spine, analogous to Jesus traveling up along the Jordan River, until it reaches the last and final 33rd vertebrae of the spine, a very special number with a much deeper meaning behind it, as it represents the intersection between the spiritual and physical world. And the symbolism of number 33 can be seen all throughout the different occult teachings of time. Whether it's in the 33rd degree aka the highest level of illumination within Freemasonry, the 33 deities in the Vedic pantheon, or even the 33 stages on the path to enlightenment in Buddhism, we can clearly see the signs and signals within the significance of this number. And now when it comes to the case of the Christ, 33 is a number of years he lived before he died on the cross, which falls right into line with the fact that the vagus nerve crosses over at the 33rd vertebrae, symbolic of Jesus being crucified at the age of 33, signifying the death of matter and the resurrection of spirit.